so we'll uh, start uh, international relations from today uh, as you know it's a very important topic and it is uh, connecting so many things like if you want to understand uh, the dynamics that are happening in india you must also understand how it is occurring across the world so there is a large scale impact on those things and for your exam also in the prelims also you will get questions from ir and in mains three to four questions most of the time four questions you'll get uh, sometimes three questions so it's uh, and you can estimate the questions unlike in uh, other areas where estimating the questions is difficult in ir it is easy to estimate the questions like uh, uh, they won't be asking questions like uh, how they ask in your group one exams uh, like that out of the box they won't ask questions will be on the basis of the important areas so you must understand uh, the dynamics of uh, indian politics right from 1945 or 47 till today how we have uh, taken shape over all these years that first you must understand that then only you can have a grip on the other situations like uh, one of the example says uh, what is the uh, raising issue now jammu kashmir is a very important issue so to understand jammu and kashmir from where you have to from which part or from which period you have to study from 1947 you have to study like that to understand what is happening in ukraine from which part you have to study or from which period you have to study you have to study from 1917 you have to study from 1917 uh, and uh, to understand uh, israel the conflict in israel from which year you have to study 3000 years back you have to know the details so i mean uh, you must at least know what happened around 3000 years back or to understand the situation in gulf you must study from the 7th century ad like uh, the countries you are seeing in gulf uh saudi arabia iran iraq or any of these countries when were they formed in that shape when were they formed after 1920 only they were not there before 1920 i mean i am not saying uh, humans are not there people are there but they were under different kingdom under the ottoman empire they were there they were not there under i mean they did not shape, take shape or if you look at the map it will be like the boundaries look like straight lines as if uh, somebody had taken a scale and pencil and drawn them observe the boundaries once they look like straight lines most of the boundaries because they were drawn with the sykes picot agreement they were drawn that is why they resemble that so you must study the background like in multiple choice exam also you should not just study the bit you must study the area around that then only that will have a proper imprint on your mind like that you must do that so here now we are starting with india's uh, foreign policy or india's foreign history we are studying from 1947 india as some people say did not start after 2014 people are saying no india started after 2014 new india started but india started after 1947 we can't ignore that 2014 what happened and all that is a different debate but the base of the country was laid by people in 1947 is the base strong or weak ha huh? why why are no, why are everybody doubting whether the base is weak if the base is weak the building will collapse no did india collapse no india is getting stronger and stronger not after 2014 from 1947 it was the base was strong so who laid the base on what basis the base was laid so the base was 
with india so many other countries were formed like after 1945 the ideology of colonialism ended why suddenly british became very good or suddenly dutch became very good or suddenly french became uh, good people the ideology ended the ideology of colonialism ended because it was facing a threat from communism that was the main reason uh, it is not only entirely because of mahatma gandhi we became independent it is because of other countries support also because of uh, hitler also if hitler had not terrified or petrified the world world war could not have happened if world war was not there we may not have got independence so early so there are the dynamics you must understand so we will confine only to foreign policy only. but remember the countries which were formed after 1947 have collapsed india did not collapse take the example of pakistan pakistan was as big as india decide pakistan was there bangladesh also was pakistan only but pakistan collapsed after 1940 1971 so it became two countries which is as big as india became two countries and so many countries changed shape suddenly there was a complete government change in china also a new china was formed in the form of taiwan so all these developments were there but we followed a policy or we continued a policy on all these basis so 1945 just before we became independent what was the world situation in 1945 the world was recovering from the second world war and it was evident that these countries who fought the second world war as friends are not going to continue they will become enemies understand so between which countries uh, the second world war happened between axis powers and allied powers so we had uh, uk usa france russia russia was then called as ussr russia on one side and on the other side we have germany we have japan we have italy on the other side and these countries defeated them and after this after the second world war it was apparent apparently clear that these countries are going to collapse that means uh, there is going to be a conflict uh, between usa and russia till second world war who was the superpower in the world uk was the superpower british were the superpowers in the world till the second world war after second world war there was a doubt whether still uk was the superpower or not if you don't understand anything or something you can any time interrupt the class you can ask doubts i'll be very happy if people ask doubts okay so don't think that you are interrupting me or if you want explanation in uh, any other language also i know three four languages i can do that the but it doesn't uh, you don't require it is a very easy topic you will easily understand these things uh, so anyway so usa and russia are going to move in a different direction it was evident why was it evident like that it was evident because the ideology was different the ideology of capitalism or liberalism was us ideology this ideology is uh, communism how many communist countries are there or were there how many con- communist countries were there so far huh how many are there 1 2 3 are there no communist countries were there communism is against the concept of country understand communism means what communism means classless 
not this class. Which class I am talking? Differences. Classless, stateless society. So communism says we are against country. We are against the government system. So there is no chance of communist country. We got socialist countries like China, Russia, Cuba, Romania. These are socialist countries. Communism ideology is different. So these two countries were built on these ideologies. What is the meaning of communism? Communism came from Marxism. Then we have socialism. Then we have communism. To briefly explain, Marxism is an ideology based on the writings of Karl Marx. Karl Marx wa was very sad about the people who were working in industries 10 hours, 15 hours a day, suffering a lot, paid less, living in dire straits. So he was very upset about their livelihood. So he then derived this ideology about exploitation of the laborers. So exploitation was always there. Karl Marx said exploitation was always there. When the land was there, landless and landowner. Or the owner and the serf. And like in our countries, the jamindar and the landless laborer. Like that, there was always exploitation. When the industries came, the exploitation was there between the owner of the industry and the worker in the industry. So, exploitation was always there. Are you exploiting anybody? Are you exploiting? Huh? At your home, are you exploiting anybody? Your domestic worker. The amount of work she does, you are not paying her. That is also called as exploitation. Normal type of exploitation. But exploitation is perpetual. It is everywhere. But that day it was too much. So Karl Marx said, this exploitation will end one day. The workers will revolt. And they will take the means of production. That means they will... Uh, own the means of production. They will take the industries. They will take the land. They will take uh, the administration. And they will create a world which is uh, without any exploitation. So it is called as utopian ideology. Utopian, utopia means imagination which may not be real. Imagination which may not become real. Like, uh, if you are dreaming of getting first rank without studying, that is called as utopian thinking. Utopian thinking. So here also, utopian ideology, because how can we create a classless and stateless society? Because you do need to have a state, no? you need to have a government. Then many people got inspired by this. Because many people, Marx have suggested methods of how to organize this uh, revolt and all those things. Actually, Marx wa was born in Germany and died in England. Revolution took place in Russia. Marx's wife was a very rich woman. Uh, she was the heir of Philips company, is there, no? No. So she was a hire of that. He, she left everything and came with Marx. Suffered in poverty with him. But Marx ideology influenced everybody. And it influenced Lenin also in Russia. So Lenin took the opportune moment of second, First World War. Russia became weak during First World War. Organized the revolt and took power in Russia. By 1917, Lenin took power in Russia. So Lenin wanted to implement this. How to implement this? You must create. Implementing Marxist ideology means you must create classless, stateless society. That means you must remove the state. You must remove the government. Then you must hand over means of production. That means land, houses, industries 
to whom to all people equally who will do that handover so you need a government so then he established the system called dictatorship of proletariat understand if you don't understand also just leave it this is not so important i am just trying to briefly tell you about this so the state will make distribution the state will take land state will take industries and it will distribute equally among all the people that is that is what lenin established dictatorship of proletariat so government will be there only for a temporary period till it achieves equality till it achieves a stateless society that is what lenin wanted to do lenin suddenly became sick after 7 years and died people think stalin was the reason behind lenin's death we are not going into that lenin was a good person stalin was not stalin used this government to exploit so communism ideology is to usurp capitalism usurp means wipe out capitalism that is the main ideology of communism because they say capitalism is exploiting the people that is why you must wipe out capitalism on liberalistic ideology what does liberalism says first kind of liberalism not the liberalism today first classical liberalism says individual will develop according to his capacity create the situation government should create the situation individual will develop if he has capacity or increases his capacity if he doesn't develop don't worry about them let them rot so there is a popular quotation which says if the drunkard is at the gutter allow him to be there that is his place that means if the drunkard is he got drunk and was and was sleeping near a drainage don't worry about them that is where he has to be because he is wasting his life let him be there that is what capitalism says communism doesn't say that communism wants to reform him distribute everything which looks good to hear but very difficult to implement that is why communist states collapsed capitalist state survived what is the meaning of liberalism what is the meaning of liberty article 21 ha huh? liberty means what from where did we take liberty french revolution liberty means absence of restraints that means individual should not be restrained from doing what he wants do you have liberty do you have liberty that means absence of restraint simply can you marry anyone whom you like can you marry anyone whom you like without hurting anybody you may run away with a boy or a girl but that is if you ask your parents they'll say don't He, does he belong to our caste does he has a job this two things only two things they are not bothered about other things first one is very very important <laughs> which means we don't have liberty there is a restraint there restraint is not allowing you to decide what you want many of you might have come here because you like it but in your mind holiday is enjoyable or class is enjoyable ah class is enjoyable means you must see a doctor holiday is always enjoyable but that is not the kind of liberty i'm talking about i'm talking about your choice what type of choice you can do you have to you can do whatever you want that is the kind of liberty we want to establish government should not tell you don't eat meat do puja go to ram temple these kind of things are restrictions they are absence of liberty 
They are absence of liberty. So that is what this ideology says. Leave individual. Let him develop. If he develops, very well. Good. If he doesn't develop, don't worry about him. This ideology says everybody must be taken along. And this ideology says the main purpose of communism is to wipe out capitalism. Which means wipe out USA. They were friends. And wipe out Western Europe. They were friends. But they will not continue as friends because they belong to a different ideology. They belong to a different ideology. So it was clear that both countries are going to separate. Both ideologies are going to separate. And they separated. And there was a cold war which started. Cold war means not a direct war. Indirect war. So what happened? Countries near USSR were forced to join this block and accept what? Accept communism. Countries near USA were forced to join this capitalist block and become what? Democratic, capitalist, liberal countries. So two blocks were there. That is why there were two powers, superpowers emerged after 1945. America tested nuclear bomb in 1945. Suddenly they became very powerful. Russia also tested nuclear bomb in 1949. So when America got the bomb, America was part of World War. America was a friend of Russia. America told about the atom bomb to all the countries, all their friends, but not Russia. They did not. That means that trust deficit was there. Trust deficit was already there. So then other countries persuaded to America asking them, tell, tell them. Tell them because we are fighting a war. And with the large scale involvement of Russia only, these powers won the war. And in the first world war and second world war, most number of soldiers were lost by Russia only. So then American President Truman uh, had a meeting with Stalin. Stalin was a Russian dictator. Whatever Karl Marx said, Stalin didn't do that. But he used communism to become, to become powerful, to become a dictator. So Truman was expecting Stalin to get surprised when he said about the bomb. Stalin was, oh, you made it like that. He was expecting. But Stalin was cool. Truman thought Stalin did not understand it. Then he explained this is the scale of devastation it will create and all. Stalin said yes, yes. Because Russia also was making a bomb. Which America doesn't know. A scientist who was working at the Manhattan project in uh, America, that scientist leaked all the formulas to Russia. That scientist did that because and he went to jail for about uh, life sentence he got, 14 years or something he got. That scientist did that because if one superpower is there, they will treat other people as slaves. That is why minimum how many superpowers should be there? Two superpowers. That is why he leaked the formulas. So Russia also made the bomb. So trust deficit was clearly apparent there. So then after the second world war, as I told you, this block became communist block, this block became capitalist block and they encouraged countries to join. They launched uh, treaties like uh, NATO, Seattle, CENTO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, Southeast Asian Treaty Organization, Central Treaty Organization. Like that they, are, they launched these uh, uh, treaties uh, and they encouraged countries to join any of these. These people launched Warsaw Pact and asked countries to sign the Warsaw Pact and become part of that. So the countries uh, which were near these countries were either threatened or appeased or even uh, or, or even forced to join that block. So they were so big that countries can't refuse to join them. Like that, the Eastern European countries became the communist bloc, Western European countries and uh, the countries uh, near America became the capitalist bloc. So world was vertically divided. 
like Winston Churchill said, an iron curtain descended from Stettin to Baltic. Sorry, from, from uh, Stettin to Greece. So, like that, world got vertically divided. India suddenly got independence in 1947. And when we got independence, uh, we were facing a dilemma. Nehru was facing a dilemma to join either this block or this block. Nehru likes communism. Nehru likes liberalism also. So, Nehru doesn't want to join any of these blocks. Why? Because if you join those blocks, you have to listen to them. You have just got independence. Just got independence. And we will lose that independence if you join any of these blocks. That was the worry of Jawaharlal Nehru. So, he encouraged all countries to form a third block. That is non-aligned block. That means not aligning with Russia or USA. Not joining either Russia or USA. So, that block was fortified, strengthened and by 1961 that block emerged. Non-aligned block. So, Nehru did not join this block or this block. That was the situation when we got independence. Nehru was our Prime Minister even before we got independence. So, that was the situation, but uh, conditions forced us to leave non-alignment. What were the conditions? Uh, one was on our western side, that is uh, on the Pakistan side. So, India and Pakistan were separated, were separated by the Indian Independence Act, Mountbatten Plan and all those things. So, the Britishers decided because till 1946, Britishers were not committal on uh, creating Pakistan. But after that, they decided to separate India and Pakistan on the lines of Hindus and Muslims. So, they want to divide the boundary. So, Winston Churchill, who was the Prime Minister of uh, uh, Great Britain, he was credited for winning the war. He guided the world during the war. And uh, he was credited for winning the war. He was very popular in uh, Great Britain, but lost the election. Everybody were surprised. People vote like that, no? So he lost the election. Clement Attlee became our Br British new Prime Minister. He immediately declared, by 1948, we are going to exit India. Because that was their election promise. So, by 1948, we are going to leave India. So, Clement Attlee clearly said, and they were preparing to leave India, make India independent. So, at that point of time, they have to divide the country. How to divide the boundaries between two countries who are existing together for so many years? How to divide the boundaries? You don't have Google map then. No. You don't have satellites then. So, it is a difficult task to divide the boundaries. But it will take time. You have to do research, survey and all those things. They don't have that much time. So, they asked Radcliffe to divide the boundaries. Radcliffe took some five or six maps. Under a fan, drew lines, finished. Boundaries were drawn. That was the reason why we had so many problems with Pakistan. So, it was not clearly, properly demarcated. Otherwise, we could have got Lahore for India. And we could have got some areas in Punjab if it was properly demarcated. What was the condition? Hindus and Muslims. But we did not get. Pakistan also felt they did not get enough areas. Pakistan also uh, did not uh, felt they did not get enough funds from India. Already funds were not there much. Whatever were left. They, they felt, usually during division, these kind of things happen. Pakistan also felt they did not get enough arms, weapons also. Because it has to be divided, no, between Indian Army and Pakistan Army, which were true. You should not write in the exam that they were true. But that was, that was the reality. That was the reality. During division, it takes place like that. So, Pakistan were already upset. And when the Britishers were, when they were leaving us, they made us riddle with so many problems. One is, 
division of the princely states when the britishers were there all of you know all these details uh, they they had princely states there are two types of states are there one state is directly ruled by britishers the other state is indirectly ruled by britishers andhra was in directly ruled by britishers as part of madras province telangana was indirectly ruled by britishers through the nizam like that so nizam state is a princely state or the princely state like that that so many around 552 princely states were there so since these states were so loyal to the uh, british people before they exited they gave them three options join india join pakistan or remain independent all of you know three countries or uh, three uh, kingdoms in our periphery they they decided to remain independent one was junagadh which was annexed by india then was hyderabad which was also annexed by india but the right word is occupied by india you should not write like that you must write only annexed by india and because nizam did not want to become part of india so he wanted to become indi be independent it was a rich state nizam was a very rich uh, was a very rich uh, king at those time and third state was jammu and kashmir the term state whenever we use in irl polity it means country understand it is, it is not like andhra or telangana state means country that is in the political parlance they use it like that so jammu and kashmir was the other state so jammu and kashmir was predominantly a muslim majority state ruled by a hindu king okay from here you can write points till now only background so here in 1846 the dogra family bought jammu and kashmir from the british for 75 lakhs they paid rupees 75 lakhs and brought jammu and bought jammu and kashmir from the british in 1846 the dogra family the successor of dogra family was maharaja hari singh so maharaja hari singh maharaja hari singh maharaja hari singh was the king of jammu and kashmir in 1947 when we became independent so hari singh had three options either to join india join pakistan or remain independent hari singh wanted to remain independent because jammu kashmir was a is a beautiful place he wanted to convert jammu and kashmir into a tourist destination like switzerland and other countries which had a potential to become like that so hari singh wanted to remain independent so he did not join india or pakistan then but pakistan were pushing him to join pakistan because majority of the people in uh, uh, jammu and kashmir were are muslims so they they thought it was the right to claim jammu and kashmir so what hari singh did hari singh signed a stand still agreement with pakistan stand still agreement means uh, that pakistan can use or pakistani people can use uh, all the roads or they can enter into jammu and kashmir freely they can do trade in jammu and kashmir they were they were not citizens but they can just behave like citizens they have all the rights of citizens that is called as a stand still agreement they can come into jammu and kashmir they can stay there they can do business do jobs and then go back but they were not citizens of jammu and kashmir they were citizens of pakistan who can use jammu and kashmir also like that he signed that agreement with jammu and kashmir he was negotiating a similar stand still agreement with india as well understand he signed a stand still agreement with pakistan he was negotiating a similar stand still agreement with india as well so then what pakistan did was pakistan in the guise of uh, its uh, pashtun warriors pashtuns are tribals so in the guise of these tribals pakistan then started 
occupying Jammu and Kashmir. So tribals were before, behind Pakistani soldiers were there. Some of the soldiers were dressed themselves as tribals and they started occupying areas in Jammu and Kashmir. That started in October, on October 22nd, 1947. All these movements started. So they started occupying Jammu and Kashmir. Maharaja Hari Singh came running to Jawaharlal Nehru, seeking help from Jawaharlal Nehru. So Indian, Indian stand was clear. Indians clearly told them, if you join India, then only we will come to your rescue. We were very clear. Then, Hari Singh signed Instrument of Accession Instrument of Accession on October 26, 1947 with India. So, Instrument of Accession means Hari Singh accepted that Jammu and Kashmir will be a part of India. So, Hari Singh gave Jammu and Kashmir to India. Who gave Jammu and Kashmir to Hari Singh? Britishers gave. It was Britishers property. They gave it to Hari Singh. Hari Singh gave it to India with which treaty instrument of accession treaty. Then Indian, Indian government moved the army to Srinagar. So Indian government moved the army to Srinagar airport. What Pakistanis were doing? Pakistanis came up to Baramula. Baramula is just somewhere about 25 kilometers away from Srinagar. So Pakistani army easily occupied up to that point. So they gave, came up to Baramula. They were very happy because they were easily able to occupy Jammu and Kashmir and they were celebrating at Baramula, which was a premature celebration. Had they not celebrated there and come up to Srinagar and closed or occupied Srinagar airport, then it could have become very, very difficult for India to reclaim Jammu and Kashmir. But they were partying here. So we were able to flow our soldiers into Srinagar. And our soldiers slowly started pushing them back. That is why premature celebration is very dangerous. Wait till the result. Don't celebrate after writing exam. Here what they did? Premature celebration only. Had they done that? Had they occupied 25 kilometers only? No? Hardly takes time. They could have easily occupied Srinagar airport. Airport is very crucial. Russian war also, Russians were not able to occupy Kiev airport. But people thought war will finish off in one or two weeks. War is still happening. Airports are very crucial. So here airport was not occupied. So Indians were able to, uh, uh, we were able to airlift our soldiers there. And our soldiers started pushing them back. Like that, the Jammu and Kashmir dispute started. And uh, India took the issue to UNO. In uh, January 1948, India took the issue to UNO. Many people say this is a mistake. We should have fully pushed them back. Maybe what we don't know what reasons compelled because by that time the international situation was quite bleak. India's position also was quite bleak. Before Britishers came to India, India was one of the richest countries in the world. The gold Aurangzeb was having was more than the entire gold Europe was having. Such was our such was our uh, uh, wealth by that time, and our artisans were renowned, very very famous. They were famous not only during this period; they were famous from fourth century BC also. There was a discussion in Athens Parliament once. Athens people were complaining. Our women are losing wealth by buying clothes from India. So women wasting money on clothes was there from 4th century BC. So they were discussing how to prevent this woman from buying uh, uh, linen from India. So that was how famous our artisans were. And during British period and before that also, in European market, 
there was heavy demand for indian linen or indian uh, uh, products what the what the europeans used to do they used to manufacture that cloth in europe put a sticker on it saying made in india and used to sell it so that was how famous our artisans were they planedly destroyed all the artisans by remo removing their thumb and killed all the industries so britishers destroyed everything they gave they gave some very few things but they destroyed everything so indian economy was in tatters no industries nothing no money was there no military was there and even the life expectancy was around 27 to 29 years that means by 27 29 years people used to die i might have died by that time and you must be getting ready to die that was the scenario in 1947 no money maybe those conditions may have forced nehru to retreat or take the issue to even or maybe nehru believed that UNO was formed on the principles of collective security so let us take it there and solve this issue so nehru took the issue to UNO which many consider as a mistake so then UNO appointed a commission UN commission on india and pakistan UN commission on india and pakistan was established to investigate this incident then UN commission on india and pakistan came up with uh, a few proposals their proposals are one is pakistan was described as an aggressor and pakistan was asked to move out of or withdraw pakistan should withdraw from jnk all foreigners should withdraw from jnk all foreigners should withdraw from jnk then after this india also should withdraw after this india should withdraw and maintain minimum army or minimum forces and maintain minimum forces for security purpose minimum forces for security purpose and next one was to this region should be ruled by locals this region should be ruled by locals or governed by locals so these are the recommendations made by un commission on india and pakistan first recommendation is pakistan should move out of jammu and kashmir second recommendation was all foreigners should move out of jammu and kashmir third one is india also should move out of jammu and kashmir and maintain minimum forces for security purpose and uh, after that that region should be ruled by locals this is a consequential non binding recommendations consequential non binding recommendation that means only after the first one is fulfilled second one will come into force only after the first two are fulfilled third one will come into force like that that means without first second won't come without first two third won't come non binding means either you may follow it or may not follow it so that is called as non binding un security council resolutions are binding un general assembly resolutions are non binding so this was the proposal or this was the recommendation put forward by un commission on india and pakistan so first thing is pakistan must withdraw pakistan did not do it no so there is no question of second or third coming into place so like that uh, jammu and kashmir got entangled between india and pakistan so united U nations commission on india and pakistan they still maintain their presence on the boundary on the loc on this side and that side un military generals group is still there they will maintain 
they'll just uh, we are asking them to leave but they are not leaving they'll maintain because this was a war which was fought between these two countries and the war ended without any proper result so like this uh, this problem was not solved india did not get enough justice in unwo why india did not get enough justice was because pakistan received support from usa pakistan joined uh, cto southeast asian treaty organization and it joined the us block it joined the us block india did not join any of the blocks so india was receiving no help pakistan received help from usa so we did not get justice so in uh, any place you must need support you won't get justice in supreme court will you get justice in the courts will you get justice before police will you get justice india is a very good democratic liberal idealistic what else the country no then why in jails only 95% people are poor people only 5% people are poor and sorry middle class and above middle class people only 1% are rich people because in india rich people don't do crime what is the reason so justice is relative always it depends on the support it depends on the support uh, like sometimes the supreme court gives good judgment most times it won't give at least sometimes it is giving the judgment oh, so many controversial judgments are there the judge who gave a judgment on ram temple became mp member of parliament why why he became another judge became a governor judges should not accept this post it was not written in the constitution but it is ethic ethics that is ethics so they only draw those draw those ethics but they were not following so all these are controls government only wins the cases opposition party mla cmps or chief ministers won't get bail but arnab goswami gets bail within 2 or 3 days ruling party members will not do corruption so all these things are there but still all said and done we are very good country you must remember that that is uh, the, the that is that is the baseline we are very good country we are we must be fortunate i am not joking there are so many country you will be learning about those countries in this class you will be learning about how the dynamics change so here we did not join this block so we did not get support from usa we did not join russia but still russia started helping us without asking not because they like india or nehru because they want to win us they want to attract us actually nehru was liked by americans the world was fascinated by the non violent movement we have led mahatma gandhi is very very popular outside india india people say i don't follow mahatma gandhi's ideology people say that fellow should have been there this fellow should have been there patel should have become the prime minister india could have been different why mahatma gandhi preferred nehru to patel i am not there but logic says patel was old patel and both of them bo- bo- both the people mahatma gandhi love them bo- love both of them he likes both of them equally but he preferred nehru because nehru was well educated quite young patel was old and patel was already having some ailments was already suffering from some diseases because of the old age and patel died in 1950 if a country which was born in 1947 loses its prime minister in 1950 it will be utter chaos because so many areas were reluctant to become part of india hyderabad was one then uh, northeast punjab northeast people till uh, 20 years back if you go to northeast they used to ask you are you coming from india 
means in which country they are there now it was okay but earlier so it took almost 50 years to unite with north east so if you lose a prime minister in 1950 it would have been utter chaos because everything was chaotic around us japan china was pushing uh, towards uh, uh, india pakistan was already done all these things so that maybe that could be the reason why nehru could have was preferred ahead of patel what what everybody says if patel was there patel also won't accept patel also could not have accepted and there was a clear bonding between those two people patel letters itself say that but they say nehru did not want to take patel as minister all these are propaganda that is why you must uh, read everything is available in fine script but the problem is in india there are large number of educated illiterates who don't understand things properly that is the main problem you must become educated literates understand the situation when somebody says hinduism is in danger we must protect it how many hindus how uh, how many christians are there in the world what is the percentage tell me something no marks for this huh? how many percentage huh? 24 only 24 next 22% muslims hindus 18% are we less compared to them no and if we want we can easily produce we have that ability everywhere we have spread across the world and 500 years muslims ruled us 500 years muslims ruled us was there any danger for hinduism no 200 years europeans ruled us europeans are more cunning was there any threat for hinduism then it was 80% now it is sorry when british ruled also it was 80% and both these religions are missionary religions missionary religions means their main aim is to convert others were they able to do that so there was no threat for 700 years when the muslims ruled and even more cunning and powerful europeans ruled there was no threat to hinduism from 1947 which king is ruling us hindu kings only no and every was a brahman see you nasim rao you know everybody except manmohan singh everybody are hindus only manmohan singh sikhism also a part of hinduism only no so hindus are ruling from 1947 when britishers ruled muslims ruled when there was no threat uh, why do you need to go and protect now 56 inch maharaja is ruling modi says no i am my chest is 56 inch so he is ruling what is a threat so another thing you may say is god should protect us we need not protect god that is why you must be educated literates so so all these things people say but we maybe nehru made a made a mistake bap people earlier also jan sang they say we should have chosen america over russia that could have been good we did not do that that may be a mistake mistakes were there i am not saying they were not mistakes but still here we suffered here we suffered because uh, we were not supported in uno we did not receive the backing of america we did not receive the backing of many countries so even though whatever america happens only will take place so in even though so what happened so then jammu kashmir became a part of india then uh, we have drafted article 370 who drafted the constitution drafting committee drafted the constitution drafting committee led by ambedkar who drafted article 370 these things they will ask you know because jammu and kashmir is important now now it is important earlier also it is important last 4 5 years it is very important who drafted article 370 ambedkar said i will not 
then they asked patel patel said i will not because all states should have equal powers then gopal swami ayangar drafted article 370 so gopal swami ayangar was a minister in maharaja ani singh's government he drafted article 370 so under article 370 we provided temporary status or temporary provision it was a temporary provision only it was not permanent we provided temporary status to sorry temporary provision to jammu and kashmir temporary provision to jammu and kashmir and jammu and kashmir was allowed to have a separate constitution jammu and kashmir temporary provision regarding what it was allowed to have a separate constitution allowed to have a separate constitution and in 1952 we had a delhi agreement in 1952 we had a delhi agreement it is regarding it is regarding extending citizenship extending citizenship fundamental rights extending citizenship fundamental rights and the jurisdiction of supreme court and the jurisdiction of supreme court to jammu and kashmir then next uh, article 35 capital a article 35 capital a so how was 35 capital a introduced if you want to introduce a con article in the constitution what is the process you have to do you have to amend the constitution how was 35 introduced without amendment understand this is a significant thing here 35 was introduced with the presidential order in 1954 so it was not introduced by amending the constitution under article 368 it was introduced by presidential order write that point in 1954 in 1954 through a presidential order through a presidential order 35 a was introduced through a presidential order 35 capital a was introduced it granted it granted complete freedom to jnk assembly it granted complete freedom to JNK Assembly to define the permanent citizens of Jammu and Kashmir. To define the permanent citizens of Jammu and Kashmir. Then the special status provided to Jammu and Kashmir was the special status provided to Jammu and Kashmir was was giving it autonomy giving it autonomy giving it autonomy in internal administration giving it autonomy in internal administration internal administration except for three subjects except for three subjects except for three subjects defense external affairs defense external affairs and communication defense external affairs and communication except for three subjects defense external affairs and communication then in uh, 1951 in 1951 jnk constituent assembly was elected jnk constituent assembly was elected so what is the purpose of constituent assembly to prepare a constitution when was indian constituent assembly formed 
December 9, 1946, first meeting was there. Like that, JNK had a separate constituent assembly. Then, next one. The constituent assembly, the constituent assembly ratified the accession of Jammu and Kashmir to India. Ratified the accession. The constituent assembly ratified the accession of Jammu and Kashmir to India on February 6, 1954. On February 6, 1954. So here, why I am saying all these points is in 1946, sorry, 47, on October 26, the treaty was signed where India became, oh sorry, Jammu Kashmir became part of India. When the treaty was signed, we have Jawaharlal Nehru, we have Maharaja Hari Singh, then uh, we also have Sheikh Abdullah there. What Pakistan kept on alleging, Pakistan kept on alleging that people of Jammu and Kashmir wanted to be part of Pakistan. But Hari Singh, because he was a Hindu, he united Pakistan, uh, JNK with India. So the will of the people was not that. But that was not true. Why it was not true? You can defend these things. Why I am digging deep here is, you can write any questions in your mains on the basis of this. So here, Jawaharlal Nehru was Indian ruler. Hari Singh was Jammu and Kashmir ruler. Sheikh Abdullah was the founder of National Conference Party. Like how Indian National Congress led Indian independence movement. Sheikh Abdullah led independence movement in Jammu and Kashmir. So obviously people were with him. Right? So people, he was people's representative. He was people's representative. So people's representative also accepted Jammu and Kashmir to become part of India. So Pakistan argument doesn't have much water because Pakistan says people's will is not that. But people's will is reflected by whose will? In 1947, if Mahatma Gandhi says something, how many Indians supported him? 99% supported him. Like that, at least 80% could have supported him, no? Sheikh Abdullah. That was one argument. Next argument is on on you just wrote, no, February 6, 1954. Who accepted India's Jammu Kashmir accession to India? Constant Assembly accepted Jammu and Kashmir is a part of India. Which means, Constant Assembly is elected by people only, no? So, people accepted Jammu and Kashmir to be part of India. That means, why this argument? Because it is it was wrong to presume that people were against joining India. It was wrong. Actually, that argument is not required also because Hari Singh's property was Jammu and Kashmir and he gave the property to India only. So, like the, so this argument is also this one. So, people's will is with India. People wanted, uh, uh, wanted Jammu and Kashmir to become part of India. Then, next point. The state's constitution the state's constitution came into force. The state's constitution came into force on January 26. On January 26, 1957. State's constitution came into force on January 26, 1957. Section 3 of the constitution says, Section 3 of the constitution says, Jammu and Kashmir is Jammu and Kashmir is and shall be Jammu and Kashmir is and shall be an integral part of Union of India. Jammu and Kashmir is and shall be an integral part of Union of India. So constitution also is accepting that Jammu and Kashmir is an integral part of India. So, 
Jammu and Kashmir was like that. It has a special arrangement. They have special rules. Constitution, Parliament Acts doesn't apply to Jammu and Kashmir unless they are accepted by the Legislative Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir. Is there anything like that in India? That Parliament tax will not apply in some areas? Huh? Ah, scheduled areas. Scheduled areas, President can decide. In Assam and all those areas, he can decide. That arrangement is there. So that is why special provisions are there in Article 370, 371, like that. So here, what happened was, Jammu and Kashmir was very peaceful till 1990. After that, it became violent. Why? I'll tell you later. So it became violent. Then finally, on uh, in uh, August 2019, Article 370 and Article 35A were scrapped. So in August 2019, Article 370 and Article 35A, they were scrapped. They were scrapped by the Indian Parliament. They were scrapped by the Indian Parliament. In August 2019, Article 370 and Article 35A were scrapped by the Indian Parliament. So, Article 370 was introduced to provide special status to Jammu and Kashmir. 35A was introduced to provide special powers to legislature of Jammu and Kashmir so that it can define who is a citizen, who can do employment, who can do business in Jammu and Kashmir. That Article 35 will describe. If you want to remove Article 370, particularly 370, then you must remove it only with the recommendation of Constituent Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir. Understand it properly. Or was this, you know this topic? Ah, how was Article 370 removed, 370 removed then? Huh? Article 370, if you have to remove, you have to remove only on the recommendation of Constituent Assembly. Then, using which article was 370 removed? Ah, this type of bits they will ask in prelims. Article 370 should be removed only on the recommendation of Constituent Assembly. But Constituent Assembly is not there. Is Indian Constituent Assembly there? It is not there. It is not there now. Its job ended. When was the job of Indian Constituent Assembly ended? Huh? That is another question. When was it ended? Huh? It ended after Indian Parliament came. Indian Parliament came in 1952 May, April May. Till then, Indian Constitution functioned as Indian Parliament. Sorry, Indian Constituent Assembly functioned as Indian Parliament. Indian Constituent Assembly had dual roles. One role is making the Constitution. Another one is making laws or functioning like Parliament. When it is making the Constitution, who was its head? When it is making the constitution, who is the head of the constituent assembly? Rayandar Prasad was the head of the constitution. That job got over by November 26, 1949. When it is making laws, because British parliament said from August 15, we will not make laws. Who was the head when it is making laws? Who was the head? Who was the head when it is functioning like parliament? G. V. Maulankar was the head. G. V. Maulankar was the head when it is functioning like parliament. So, by November 26, 1949, its role as constituent assembly to make constitution was over. But it continued. Continued till the first parliament was established. Up to 1952, it continued. Constituent Assembly continued under the leadership of G. V. Maulankar. So, 1952 it was not there. Jammu and Kashmir Assembly 
prepared the constitution by 1956-57, then it was not there. But if you have to remove Article 370, who must remove it? Only on the recommendation of constituent assembly. So then what we did was, we used Article 367 to change the meaning of constituent assembly to legislative assembly. Using Article 367, you can change the terms in the constitution. Understand? So which article was used? 367 was used. So write down. Article 367 was used. Article 367 was used. Article 367 was used. Because 367 provides guidance on because 367 provide guidance on the interpretation provides guidance on the interpretation of various provisions of the constitution interpretation of various provisions of the constitution and set out the rules for and set out the rules for Determining the meaning of words. Determining the meaning of words and phrases used in determining the meaning of words and phrases used in used in the constitution. Used in the constitution. So we have used the presidential order of art 272 to change the meaning in 367 and the word constituent assembly of Jammu and Kashmir was replaced as a uh, legislative assembly of Jammu and Kashmir. So that problem was over. Then there was no legislative assembly. Then we used president because there was no legislative assembly. Like this uh, Jammu and Kashmir uh, Jammu and Kashmir, Article 370 was scrapped. Article 35A was deleted. 35A was deleted, 370 was scrapped. 370 was scrapped, 35A was deleted. Using Article 367 and Presidential Order of 272, we have removed those things. We have removed those things. And now Jammu and Kashmir was integrated with the rest of India. It was completely int integrated with the rest of India. It was actually one of the good things done by the Modi government. Long back they should have done it. They have not done it. Finally, Jammu and Kashmir was completely integrated. What did the Supreme Court say about this? What was the verdict of the Supreme Court? Uh, Supreme Court supported the government. Supreme Court, you must have learnt it in your polity class about that. Supreme Court uh, supported the government. And Supreme Court said that internal sovereignty of Jammu and Kashmir cannot be entertained. Cannot be entertained because they, it will uh, destroy the federal spirit that Supreme Court also said. And uh, Supreme Court also advised that election should be conducted in Jammu and Kashmir uh, by what date? When the election was supposed to be held in Jammu and Kashmir by what date? September 30, 2024 and told the government to restore the statehood to Jammu and Kashmir and Supreme Court also said that there must be a truth and reconciliation commission. There must be a truth and reconciliation commission. Truth and reconciliation commission that must be set up. What is Truth and Reconciliation Commission? Supreme Court said 370 removing is fine. It said it is fine. It told the government that 370 cannot continue further because all states federalism can't be different for other states. Then it said conduct elections as soon as possible before September 30, 2024. Give statehood to Jammu and Kashmir as soon as possible because Jammu and Kashmir got demoted. In India, states will not get demoted. 
you will become uh, state from ut but from ut you won't become sorry from state you won't become a ut in jammu and kashmir it became like that then truth and reconciliation commission one of the judges recommended that truth and Re reconciliation commission should be set up what is truth and reconciliation commission on what basis they were saying this no 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 not that one so truth and reconciliation commission was on the basis of what happened in south africa south africa what happened south africa what happened was there was apartheid in south africa slavery ended across the world but slavery did not end in south africa the blacks who were majority whites are only some 8 to 10 percent so whites are ruling south africa and they conduct they committed large scale atrocities on the blacks finally by 1990s uh, under the leadership of nelson mandela south africa apartheid was lifted blacks came into ruling understand south africa they suffered nelson mandela was also a follower of mahatma gandhi all world leaders are followers of mahatma gandhi except indians so he was a follower of mahatma gandhi nelson mandela and he started non-violent movement first then he said i can't do it i don't know how mahatma gandhi did it i can't do it then he became violent movement also he was arrested finally apartheid was lifted in south africa so during apartheid large scale violence or atrocities were committed on black people suddenly black people became the rulers suddenly tomorrow if arvind kejriwal becomes the prime minister in april what will we do to modi like that it happened imagine that like that it happened like that it happened suddenly became the black people became the rulers white people became came under them so black people should take revenge on white people like in our movies after interval it happens no so black people should take revenge so what nelson mandela did was unnecessarily it create a lot of bad blood so he established truth and reconciliation commission and told the white people whoever committed atrocities come forward give a public apology you will be forgiven we can live together like that this commission was established all of them came forward accepted their sins and nobody was punished country became united why the judge was saying this we committed atrocities towards whom jammu and kashmir people let us accept that it won't happen it won't be established also let us accept that and let us say sorry and unite reunite with people of jammu and kashmir that is what the judge was saying establish this so they may ask you in the exam truth and reconciliation commission suggested by the supreme court is on what basis what basis ah what happened in south africa because till 1990 everything was fine but after that what happened in 1986 or 87 there was an election in jammu and kashmir people were fed up with the national conference party and congress party they were fed up with those parties they voted against those parties but those parties only won the election understand what i am saying people voted against congress party and national conference party of sheikh abdullah his son was there farooq abdullah so they voted against that party but that party only won the election because they rigged the election people were unhappy people were very very unhappy with that outcome because they want to remove the government but still the government came like how in russia it came put in one with 88 percent votes votes came but who voted votes came who voted put in must have voted so like this uh, in 1986 uh, election it came then from 1976 77 to 1988 
the jihadis fought in afghanistan jihadis are afghan terrorist they fought in afghanistan so 1988 their job was over they were diverted to jammu and kashmir by pakistan like that large scale violence took place in jammu and kashmir it got controlled and again it resumed it got controlled again it resumed like that so when uh, that kind of instability is there army is obviously forced to do certain kind of violent things so the judge was saying you come and accept this nobody will accept it you and you say sorry to these people and unite with that people judge was saying about that so this is what happened regarding jammu and kashmir now what is uh, justice ranjana prakash desai commission commissions you must prepare a table what all the commissions are there you must prepare a table and on that basis you will get one or two questions definitely you will get one or two questions on commissions so you must only prepare don't buy it from somewhere it will be available but you prepare it on your own then you can remember it easily what was the latest commission established kg balakrishnan commission ramnath govind commission was there kg balakrishnan commission was there so on all these things they last questions so now jammu and kashmir now jammu and kashmir is uh, so you can see this no? you can see this just bend this side and see this for today so we are not having jammu and kashmir entirely this part is accession region which was with china, which is with china around 38000 square kilometers and from this part this one only only this part is with india only this part is with india the other part is pak occupied kashmir the gilgit baltistan region this one this is pak occupied kashmir they call it as azad kashmir so we are having only up to this point only this point we are having or we are controlling jammu and kashmir the rest is either with pakistan or with china and uh, here we have uh, another area here sakshigam valley that also was given to china by pakistan so when the elections are conducted we conduct elections for the entire region understand when the elections are conducted we conduct elections for entire region don't think that we will set up a polling booth there naam ke vaaste we will release a notification so whenever we conducted elections there are 111 seats in jammu and kashmir 87 are there in india were there in india 24 are there in pak occupied kashmir so we conduct elections for all 111 seats 24 seats in the assembly are kept vacant they were they are not touched they are kept vacant uh, presuming that that region will come to our part so now after jammu and kashmir got separated and now it became jammu and kashmir is only this much now the entire part is ladakh so jammu and kashmir got divided into two uts one ut is jnk the other ut is ladakh ladakh is quite a big place what is the population of ladakh what is the population 4 lakhs only the entire rtc cross road ashoknagar population is there in this region so when 87 seats are there 83 are there in jammu and kashmir four seats are there in ladakh four seats are there in ladakh when 87 seats are there now justice ranjana prakash desai commission justice ranjana prakash desai commission uh, this commission what did it, it was appointed to increase the seats in jammu and kashmir now how many seats are there 83 because four were in ladakh now there is no assembly in ladakh so that four were gone 
so 83 seats so this commission was appointed to study and increase or decrease the seats in this area this commission recommended the seat should be increased to 90 this point you must remember the seat should be increased to 90 so ranjana prakash desai commission was appointed to study and decide how many seats have to be appointed so it was a delimitation it is a delimitation commission so delimitation commission recommended the seats in jammu and kashmir to be increased from 83 to 90 when was the last delimitation commission for the entire country last delimitation commission delimitation commission responsibility is to increase seats and increase or decrease the area of the constituency 52 we got 62 we got 72 we got next one was in 2002 after that there was no delimitation commission because under the 42nd amendment act we decided to freeze the constituency up to 2000 then under the 84th amendment act we increased the freeze to 2002 to 2026 and 87th amendment act is regarding what 87th huh? 87th is increasing or decreasing the area of constituencies on the basis of 2001 census okay then next rohini commission is regarding what find out that one so this is about jammu and kashmir till now ah yes uh, this is this is uh, increasing the seats from 83 to 90 so that is the present situation in jammu and kashmir article 370 was scrapped 35 was deleted and jammu and kashmir was completely integrated into the rest of india right so we'll continue from there from to, in tomorrow's class